Oh, look, it all began back in about the 19, uh, 1970s when I was working for a firm called Warman International, a uh, subsidiary of Pico Walls, and they used to make huge pieces of mining equipment. And um, in those days, a, uh, I was working as a uh, cost of management accountant, um, almost finished my degree, and in walked these guys called auditors. They were also chartered accountants. Well, they took over the boardroom, uh, made an appointment to see, they didn't make an appointment to go and see the company secretary, just walked in, whereas I had to make an appointment. And I thought, yeah, these guys are pretty cool. So um, uh, I sort of just stumbled into the profession. Really? After I finished my degree, I then worked for uh, Touche Ross, a very big chartered accountancy firm in uh, in Sydney. Um, they um, It was great working there. We had about, uh, I think, about four floors of the MLC Centre. I had a uh, window uh, window office overlooking the uh, the Sydney Harbour. I worked uh, both here in Sydney and uh, then uh, they also sent me off to Glasgow, which was fantastic. Uh, always remember, one thing I do remember about Glaswegians is they're, they're great people to work with, but also very optimistic. And I'll never forget one night, they were always inviting me out for curries, curry houses everywhere. And they said, Ron, you coming out for a curry? And I said, Sure, what's the temperature like outside? And they said, ah, ah, it was minus 11, but it's warmed up to minus 2. <laughs> I'll never forget that. Anyway, after that, I uh, wanted to branch out from audit investigations, which I used to specialise in Touche Ross. Um, then joined uh, Bruce Davies' uh, practice, and he used to specialise in um, film stars, politicians, colourful racing identities like Mick Dittman, etc. And we used to have a lot of fun doing uh, tax returns for people like uh, Mel Gibson and Judy Davis. Uh, Hornsby was the, the obvious choice to set up practice living at Normanhurst. Uh, my first um, my first office was uh, pretty small. It was uh, uh, sublet from another uh, another chartered accountant. It was basically uh, uh, you know just a closet on steroids. Really, it was pretty small. Um, but the, the, after that, we then moved to um, uh, just above Camille Real Estate, 16, uh, 16 George Street, and. Um, then we came across these premises at 10 Edgeworth David, which uh, Bob Newell uh, from um, Chambers and Fruin Real Estate happened to mention to me. He said, look, they're up for sale. Why don't you have a look at them? Chris and I had a look, Chris, my wife, that is, and I um, uh, thought it was just about the right size. And so we decided to move in and uh, buy our own premises here. <laughs> Oh gee, there were uh, there were a few tough times. Um, uh, it's very hard I mean, when you're running your own business. You've, you've got to be not just the technician doing the work. You've got to be the administrator running the practice. You've got to be the entrepreneur looking at the marketing, the HR HR manager looking after your personnel. You've got to wear so many different hats, and um, that's uh, that's quite a challenge for people running their uh, small businesses. Uh, times were tough. Sometimes I remember. Uh, uh, you know, maybe you had a lot of uh, people owing you money, but you just only had about the you were down to maybe the last twenty dollars in your pocket. And I remember many a time having to go over to uh, Coles and Woolies to buy frozen pies and heat them up in the micro. <laughs> but um, and tough decisions too. I mean, it's very hard when you're uh, when you're just a husband and wife team, which we were originally. And um, then comes the time when you've got to put on your first uh, staff member. So uh, you've got to make sure that you've got the uh, enough market there, market share, and uh, cash flow to, to make sure you can pay them. Oh no 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 no! We've uh, got quite a few clients from uh, outside the Shire, so we're actually trying to bring business into the Shire. Uh, for example, we've got clients uh, as uh, far north as Palm Beach down south to Peakhurst and uh, out west to Parramatta, which we call the, uh, the uh, three-piece triangle. Um, uh, we've also got clients overseas um, in um, uh, Japan, Denver, USA. Uh, we had some in Ireland at one stage. Um, so yeah, we've tried to bring a lot of business into the Shire. Um, I know that uh, the Chamber actively tries to promote business within the Shire, uh, but in addition to that, we're also trying to bring business into the Shire.
Oh look, it's great, it's mixing with other business people. Uh, I have a um, um, high regard for other small business people. I tend to talk of them, talk of them and us as being in the trenches. And it is pretty tough out there. I love the camaraderie, camaraderie ship. Uh, you can be out there listening to others to keep your finger on the pulse. Uh, Greg Bepper, for example, he uh, brings up a lot of uh, information about what's happening within the Shire. I'd like to hear what other people have got to say about what they're doing uh, with businesses in the Shire. I think about it very seriously because it's, um, uh, for most people, when they do go from being employed to operating their own business, it's quite a change. It's very important to, uh, to accept that you've got to be both the technician, entrepreneur and the administrator all wrapped up in one, so you've got to wear many, many hats. And uh, from an accounting viewpoint and business viewpoint, I think uh, it's very important to keep your finger on the uh, cash flow pulse. Mm -hmm.